today we are going to get a little bit crafty. We're going to try an antique four vases today. I know there's a lot of tutorials online about it, but I really didn't want to have to go out and buy a bunch of different items for this. So I spent $8 on an enormous jug of compound at the Habitat for Humanity store. And then everything else I already had on hand from previous DIYs or little things that I've done with the kids. In total, I only spent just under $20 on all four of them. So I thought that was a really good deal. And again, I didn't want to spend a whole lot on this, so I'm just trying to use up the paint and the materials that I already have. So let's see if we can make this work. So we're starting off by spray painting all four vases with this ultra matte black spray paint so that it will have an even base and help everything else adhere better later on. Once I let everything dry, I brought it inside and got ready for the fun part. I used some gloves to protect my hands and dug right in. Let me tell you, this texture was so fun to play with and I felt like a kid again. Instead of testing a different technique on each face, I chose to mix techniques on all of them. That way each one felt more authentic. I wanted them all to coordinate but look different, so I just went with it. I love projects like this because it's so individual. Each one of us will have our own spin on things and unique style. So if you're trying this, just go with the flow, girlfriend. It's going to be great. I started by just rubbing it in side to side, being careful not to press too hard so that the pattern looked more organic. Once I had the first layer done, I went back through and added thicker sections to give it more texture. Because my end goal was a lived in stone effect, I really wanted it to look like random crevices and smooth parts, rough parts. I played around with the inside of my palm as well, trying to lightly smear out any are areas that looked like the outline of my fingers. Cause let me tell you, it's really easy for you just to see the finger swipes on there. So be careful of that. I let that dry for about an hour and came back to take a closer look. My eyes just needed a break and I just stepped away and when I came back, I looked at them and I couldn't stop thinking about a mummy <laughs> with the strokes the way that they were. So I decided to try a damp paper towel to mix it up a bit. If you're going to do this, make sure not to wet it too much though because the, if you use too much water, it will wipe away all of your hard work. I needed very little pressure as well to move around the product as needed. You can see here that I incorporate some flat swipes in alternating directions to make it look more natural. When I dive into a creative project, I'm not one to plan out every detail in advance. I'm more of a jump on in and figure it out as you go kind of girl. <laughs> so each one of these was slightly different even though I use the same techniques. Honestly, just do what feels right to you. I found this project to be very forgiving, and if I didn't like the way something looked, I kept playing until I was happy with the result. Once I was done applying the compound, I let all four vases sit for 24 hours to make sure they were fully cured. As I mentioned, I wanted this project to be as low cost as possible, so I used paints that I already had on hand. I will link them in the description though in case you're interested. I found that having a black paint, a gray or a charcoal paint, and then two neutrals. I used a light beige and a darker beige that was almost brown, and this worked out really well. It allowed me to create a lot of depth and mix the colors as needed for different shades. I wanted this larger vase to be the darkest of the bunch, so I put a main base layer of gray across most of it. I left some areas out so it would give it a little bit more dimension. Then I went back in and patted in some black along the bottom. I really wanted these to look like they had been sitting in the dirt in the back of a barn somewhere for who knows how long until someone stumbled upon them. I know there are a lot of different application techniques out there, but honestly, this stencil brush was the most comfortable for me and gave me the most control over what I was doing. The main goal of this was to go with my gut, get lost in the project, and honestly, I found it to be very therapeutic. It was just what I needed. Instead of just painting with a constant swiping motion, I used the texture that the compound had made in step one and went with it using dabbing or swirling motions just to make sure every nook and cranny was covered the way it needed to be and used any remaining paint on my brush to blend as needed.
So for the shortest dish, I used the leftover colors of paint that I had from when I started and I did everything on top of this garbage bag which honestly made cleanup a breeze. I highly recommend. And when I went to paint this and add the texture, I added in some baking soda and I just kind of swirled around the colors with the baking soda chunks and I was very imperfect with this. So not everything was mixed together completely. It had some swirls of color and different chunks of baking soda which gave some amazing texture and it ended up being one of my favorite pieces at the end. When I was at this part, my daughter walked in and said, ew, mommy, that looks like mud. So I knew I was on the right track. When layering your colors, try and think about how the light would hit the vase. I tried to create highlights towards the top and shadows at the bottom to keep it looking as natural as possible. I used this idea as well on any raised texture points, starting with the darker colors as a base on the outside and blending into a lighter color towards the center of the raised pieces. After all of the paint had dried, I ended up adding a few extra layers of dimension because I just wasn't sold on it yet and let me tell you, this made all the difference. I added more of a brown accent by mixing some of my colors together and I tried to make it look almost like the stone had cracked over time. So for finishing touches, I went through with a paper towel and dabbed a tiny, the tiniest amounts, let me tell you, super tiny, this little bit goes a long way, of dark paint throughout to break up any solid spots and blend things as needed. And this really helped get that lived in look versus freshly painted DIY. And if I can tell you one thing, just remember to have fun with it. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just about the experience and how you want it to look. Honestly, this project was just the DIY therapy that I needed. And here's the final result. Hope you enjoyed coming along on this ride with me and I would love to hear what you think about the finished product in the comments. If you'd like to see more DIYs like this in the future, hit subscribe and be sure to check out my playlist for other projects that we've done in our home. See you next week!